Welcome to another edition of Artist Talk on Bob's Radio. In uh, this time, we're talking from two different parts of the country. Again, a video call. Zaisha, what a pleasure to have you on board with us. Firstly, uh, I do this to a lot of artists. To uh, before I you know have them speak, is tell them yeah. how much we like the music and the kind of uh, different elements that are there into the musicality. So we think you have some great musical, what do you say, bifurcations and diversifications as well. So well done. And I've been going through your YouTube as well. What numbers have you been clocking? Welcome on board, firstly. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's um, great to be here. And actually, Bianca suggested uh, yeah. you guys to. And she reached out and she's like the warmest person uh, that I know in the community. She's doing great as well. So um, I'm really thankful more for her so that she got us connected. And Bianca was one know. of our first artists uh, we got connected with uh, last year. And... Uh, okay. We just love the music as well. And this is what we want to build, you know, this entire ecosystem of uh, the indie music scene. And it's great to yeah. see, you know, artists supporting each other. That's such an, uh, you know, heartwarming awesome. feel as well. Exactly. Now, yeah. let's, before we get into understanding your music and the songs and everything, I had one yeah. question to you. What is handwritten and handcrafted music? I love this question. Okay. Um, so nobody's asked me this before, but yeah, I, I use this term in my bios a lot. Like if you've been through my social media also, it's everywhere it's handcrafted and handwritten. I just think it's when we write our own music, there's power in that. And it's essentially me writing it on paper first. So I don't, I very rarely use like digital um, to you know type lyrics or something I just love paper so much and the feel of it that handwritten is like I'm actually writing my lyrics and you know going scribbling through it so that's why I call it handwritten and handcrafted but also um, they say it's true to its uh, practice and experience as well that when you're writing the flow is easier from the mind to the hand than the typing part than typing yeah and it feels unnatural to type like for me I just love the feel of paper like most of my lyrics are not even on audio like on my phone I get yelled at by my dad he's like at least record your <laughs> music in audio so that it's there for you to hear it because everything's on paper I have like this like bunch of papers and it's like scattered pa papers all from napkins sometimes sometimes I'm at the you know flight and I get an idea and I'll grab whatever is next to me and oh. I have those papers stored with me so that's why like I'm a big that's a, geek that's a, that's a image of a typical artist the story of a typical artist wherever you are an idea comes you're going to just pop it up <laughs> and write it down so, exactly. so that way I think a lot of artists are handwritten and crafted then Yes, yeah. but I just say it. I don't think they say it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is flat on what you do. There's nothing wrong in it. You know, it's something that you do with a lot of passion and a lot of, you know, yeah. commitment towards it. So is music uh, the only thing that you pursue right now or because of the world that is there, you also have another career that you dabble in? So uh, I have been very fortunate enough to have a father who's into music so he understands the struggle and he understands that it takes time to build something in the art community so I have no pressure as of such to um, get another job touch wood I am doing fine like there are gigs that I get and everything also I'm a tarot card reader so like... oh you <laughs> yeah. tell the fortunes of Bob's radio too <laughs> I'm into spirituality nice. so I have like science and I have a you know whole thing with tarot and everything I've been trying to dabble into writing because I love writing so much that I thought I could get into creative writing so I'm in the process of that but I've never had the kind of uh, you know pressure I think I'm lucky and fortunate to have a um, father like him who supports me fully and it's like you take your time I know it will take time and we're not pressuring you to force or get into something else so and, my 100% uh, that supportive music. father we're going to talk about as well because uh, I did get to see something and I'm going to talk to you right. about that but since yeah. you mentioned about spirituality uh, does spirituality also flow into your music like does it have an influence because sometimes people do have that um, both in there. Yeah, I've tried to keep it separate. Like it's been four years since I've been doing this and I've been trying to keep it separate. But the more that I do it, the more I find that there are so many elements that I could, you know, um, mix and match with. Right. Even the teacher that I have right now is like, I don't know if you're aware of the practice called Reiki. So there are like seven chakras and the whole thing, right? So the practices now that we're doing, she engages each chakra and opens up each chakra when we are even practicing. So she's 
has asked me in fact to you know merge the two together but i don't want to get into like completely dharmic <laughs> fully like uh-huh. spiritual gaan and everything because i don't think that i could write about something that's maybe not spiritually correct or something right you know you have a varied audience so you really can't you know uh, exactly. suffice what everybody wants that's one yeah. also you i don't know if you also believe this both are innate to you the music and the spirituality so yeah. the both of them coming together and combining i don't think it's a problem if if, if there's good music coming out of it uh, who do you know yeah. and i can see that on the music yeah. that you're putting out too yeah i mean there's a fine line though i just don't want to <laughs> completely mesh the two together <laughs> i want Fair to maintain enough. yeah so you yeah. as an artist aisha i think the first song i heard of yours i mean when i started looking up your music was barishi barish and from barishi to now so first of all ki karaniya and then after that now that you have the latest one that's through uh yeah it's called it's an english number right i mean the, the name it, is, the name of it is hell? in english what the hell? Hell? yeah it's exactly. right yeah it's musicality so different now i'm very curious to understand did you learn of this or were suggestions given to you how is it for you from barish until here okay so um barish was the first song that i composed and right. wrote so i've written all of my songs till date but uh, my dad used to compose for me and then he started saying i can't help you with everything you have to start learning so until and unless i say this to everyone that i was not thrown in the middle of song making completely bare and like pani yahan tak tha and i was like i'm drowning but uh-huh. i didn't did not learn to swim till that point a lo- lot of people they train they learn they experiment with songs and everything i have learned on stage i have failed on stage <laughs> i do that till date with each of my songs so even when the first song came up which was dreams i remember one of dad's musician friends calling him up and saying are aapki beti bahut choti hai she shouldn't she shouldn't get into music right now her voice is too kacha and you know it just doesn't make sense right now she has so much to learn and while i agreed completely i was having so much fun to make these songs and learn in the process that i didn't think about you know being ready ready because till right. date i don't and i don't think 4 years later me would ever feel ready also because there's so much to learn right you can never think that you're ready ready so in fact i learned ki theek hai i'll fail i'll fail i'll do everything i learn on stage only so that is why the difference that you see in sound also if you notice like my voice has changed a lot my lyrical sense has changed a lot my songs have changed a lot that i love that the process is like that and i always have this rule that never hide your old stuff because i'm proud of everything i've done so far i have hidden some youtube videos which were cringy as fuck not related to my music at all but i will never hide one of my songs like that's my belief ki theek hai jo bhi hai this is me it's right. part of me and i want to learn on stage and keep growing as an artist through that so the barish was like the first song that i composed and then right now composing comes naturally and it comes easily but there are so many things to learn still so i think that I can has see, been... you know you're not born ready with it but then you you know just move mold yourself chisel your way through exactly. through all that exactly. experience and experience is nothing but you know feeling is an experience and from that you will learn yeah. every yeah. artist goes through that like even me as an mc exactly. i still get jitters before i get on the mic sometimes so these are exactly. part and parcels of the industry exactly. so it's as long as you own it i'm guessing yeah. uh, that there is no problem in it in the journey that you you know come across yeah. so you say that dad has helped you a lot in this now in terms of composition is one part and also in terms of music videos doing that's another another part because of the demand of uh, the platforms that you have right now to start with in terms of the music uh dad helped you first but now how do you go about do you get artists to come by producers how do you collate all of this together so i've been i think networking a lot since the first song in balish so for the first three music videos that you see dreams was completely by my friends i think everybody starts like that only it's like living room mein baithe ek idea aaye and you tell your friends can you help me out with that so i had my best friends working on one of one of them was a cinemat one of them directed one of them was like i'll do your makeup one of them was like i'll style you so that was a completely home grown video if you will um meri zubani was shot in the pandemic that was a nightmare because the video is 
crap like i will tell you this on your face it is absolute crap i tell nobody to watch it i will not take it down because obviously it's close to my heart but the video is absolute crap you can't see my face i had barely learned how to do my makeup i'm looking like a chudel in that video <laughs> completely but i love this song so much that it's out there barish uh, dream uh, barish breath and ki kara the music video that you see is shot by the same person so i was lucky to have a mentor he's still my mentor he um has helped me out with the music video he's a uh, jay shet i don't know if you know him he's so, a dada saheb palki award winner photographer yeah. and videographer exactly so i know him since i was a child Oh. and he was like you know what i'm going to help you out with barish and i had no intention of asking him because he charges like a lot but he made those videos out of love for me and he was just like i want to see you grow and I've, that's what i'm saying i've been fortunate having these people around it's me that have always been there to help me and that was the process with him then for uh, the ep that you see right now the what the hell wala ep i had my best friend she did the music video and everything i have paid all of them but it's just that sheer love and you know togetherness of the community that always helps me out and i think networking has been my biggest strength when it comes to that like forming that community around me as yeah. we were talking about bianca also so i think that has been uh, the biggest strength for me when it comes to teamwork that's what uh, indie music is all about no that it's first the exactly. support fraternity around you and then slowly yeah. build on to build a support system for yourself from the outside so exactly it seems like a journey that's going upwards only yeah for you so i'm only wishing the best and even the numbers on your youtube show the same because uh, key karane i think is your highest views and stuff with 53 yes. 54000 yeah 50k plus so what was the reason like you had barish eh, which was like a little slowish uh like very yeah. nice in the monsoon sort of a track and then here yeah. comes ki karania which if you look if you listen to it the musicality is very much like your instagram okay 2 to 3 seconds you got to get the public to you know get their attention exactly. was it based yeah. on that or was it like a choice that came in from uh, suggestions uh no i think i've never listened to suggestions one is that's oh. my dog strength <laughs> as well i just don't want to get boxed in as ye aise hi gaane banati hai ya this is the only limit she can do i want to make everything so if i feel like kal ko that i want to make a jazz song or a blues song i will get into it fully and i will do it i just don't want to have any limitations when it comes to song making so with barish it was like um mere mood pe bahut depend karta hai what i'm writing and what i'm feeling at that time barish was a lot to do with you know being in the moment and completely flowing with the monsoons it's my favorite season so i wanted to write a song with that ki kara was when i was going through doubts about my love life and i was feeling okay where is this going where is this heading who will i end up with and everything so ki kara is uh, my first punjabi song in fact because i'm half punjabi as well pahadi and punjabi so um i wanted to get dad ka thoda flavor and i was just like okay you know what i'm going to incorporate this into a song and try to write in punjabi so i always keep challenging myself and ki kara was born out of that not out of any trend or instagramable content no so what about the uh, that happened to because the music um, is very dancey very like high tempo pop right. now now when you look right. at parish and then you look at this this is of course a huge transition to from here to here yeah. so that's why i, I asked know. you like you know uh, you wrote punjabi in terms of lyrics but in terms of yeah. musicality how did how did that sit in place so um when i was making kikara it was initially a very uh, soft song initially it was very like uh, you know thoda sa beats and it was very slow 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 but then when i was uh, singing it i was like it does not sit well like this is not what i want it to be and uh, i had a sort of vision for the song anyways because i draw all my music videos like i have this entire book of mine and i literally color my music videos that's why i'm saying crafted as well i literally color my music videos before they are being made so every element i'll color like the background i'll color my face i'll color what kind of you know projects so what do i want props and everything i'll color everything so when i was coloring i got the idea of why don't we make this into a dancing number where i'm actually you know that uh, pop star vibe wala i was like ek gana to banta hai where i'm literally feeling like a pop star and i'm like i'm going to get like a, a fan on my face and if you see the music video it's constantly like my hair is flying and all that i had my katrina kaif moment mm-hmm. and everything i was like this song deserves that <laughs> and that's why that is how it was born that oh. whole we changed up and we made it like a dancing clubish sort of number it initially is, uh, it was like like your own love ballad but in the most dancey way exactly yeah <laughs> exactly now tell me a little more about your dad was he a musician too 
So he's a musician. He's a, a working musician since twenty five years. It's been twenty five wow. years in the industry for him. Um, very different journey uh, than what I think I'm pursuing. But he was a guitarist initially, and he had has played with uh, Jagjit Ji, um, Jagjit Singh, the Kazal player. Um, then uh, he's he's now playing with Hari Haran Ji, Rukumar Rathor Ji, all these amazing giants. So wow. I've always grown with that love and music, you know, around me all the time. um so that's why he has been instrumental in my journey we fight a lot though <laughs> like there are a lot better? of <laughs> uh, what to do uh, <laughs> um on our journeys like the way it should be and you know he's always push me like never satisfied i could bring grammy kalko and he would be like it's not that level <laughs> it's not there but that is one of the biggest strengths because i think i keep pushing because of it jab bhi main thoda comfort zone mein aa jati hu he's just like okay now you're falling back into comfort zone it's time to you know come out come out of i mean it. he's been in so the business he knows what it is exactly. so exactly you have nothing to do but just listen <laughs> I mean, I okay. I disagree. Like, I would also know some different things. That's what I keep telling him. I'm like, the industry has changed a lot since you were in it. Like, abhi the time uh-huh. is to maybe you know focus a little bit more on social media as well and a little bit more on networking as well. It's what we have to do as artists. Like, I cannot argue with. That being like, you observe, if you sit in the bed for eight hours and you practice for eight hours, you will become the greatest musician. That's not it anymore. You need skills. You need to dance. You need to know everything about it. I want to learn everything from programming to you know instruments and everything. I'm doing that in process. So that wouldn't happen if the process is just to sit in a room and yeah. sing for eight yeah. hours. And uh, although he doesn't say to do that, that's just one of the examples I'm giving. But uh, we do fight on our. journey ka path and what steps i should take and everything. you know there's also one beautiful thing that i got to witness is uh, you hear like say the biggest names in the industry will have their kids to come and sing with them and stuff but you yeah. really don't see that often an indie mm-hmm. musician being supported by a musician dad on stage of course there's always a backing in the family or at the back yeah. end but on stage to come and you know just play the guitar and keep you company now that is so beautiful to watch for any indie musician because there is this notion you know that people say that where is the money and why will the parents support you you know where exactly. are you going to take this so a lot of these sort of talks that come in and for that to happen i think there's a lot of backing that comes in from the dad huh? yes it does yeah a lot of support and a lot of um, i think blind faith at times he's just like i trust you i believe in you he will fight he'll do everything but he's like okay you took your decision i support you i back you 100% you do whatever i'll be there with you and the stage thing that's such a um beautiful thing for another reason also because he has played with such amazing musicians he doesn't even need to do it just because i'm his daughter but he will do it out of the love for music also at times he'll just be like you know what i just want to meet kids i want to talk to kids over there and share my music with them he would just come for that also when he doesn't need to i remember we had a show in um, i was like i was part of a lineup basically in shanmukhanand hall uh, sign me there's upar jaake india artists ke liye ek aur space so it's like a smaller um, you yeah. know place to play for india artists emerging india artists and i got a gig there and i was playing and my guitar is cancelled on me on the day and i was like oh my god how will this happen i need rhythm and this won't happen and everything and my dad's just like Okay, you know what? I got you. I'm coming. I'm like, no, you can't play with me. There will be so many people there. What will I tell? I mean, who am I bringing? It's like, no. But say, I'm Sushant Bhai. I was like, I'm not calling you Bhai over there. And I kept saying, G on stage, G on stage. And we had like a 15 minute set only. It was not even that long because there was a big lineup. Right. And 15 minutes he played with me and everything. And then one of the anchors heard uh, me calling him Papa. once mm-hmm. and then ekdam se wo aage and he's like aapke papa hai na ye and i was so embarrassed i was like what will i tell them and i was like yeah and they're like okay can he come and speak that you know we've never had someone's parent perform with them can he talk about you your journey and what he what he's doing and everything and he imparted some knowledge hum jaise hi niche utre stage se i think hum shanmukhanand ke niche the wahan pe back stage hum um परफॉर्मर्स एकदम से केम टू मैंने सेड सुशांत भाई आप क्या कर रहे हो यहां पे यहां पे शो भी नहीं हो रहा एंड दैट्स ऑल लाइक ही ही डिडंट से एनीथिंग ही इज लाइक मैं बस घूमने आया था इन द याशला की परफॉर्मेंस थी लाइक आई हैड कम फॉर द किड्स ओवर हियर आई जस्ट केम फॉर देम इट वाज नॉट फॉर मी एंड आई वाज जस्ट लाइक या ही इज राइट इट वाज जस्ट माय परफॉर्मेंस माय गॉड पर ऑफ कोर्स आई थिंक व्हेन यू लुक बैक इट इट इज अ ब्यूटीफुल क्लिपिंग टू लुक बैक ऑन Yes, it's a very sweet thing. Like he doesn't need to 
call this it embarrassing like i feel embarrassed for him i'm like he doesn't need to do this he's at such a great level <laughs> and i just felt bad for him the why is he here <laughs> what will i tell people i mean but, yeah. that's the thing with parents that there is uh, nothing to stoop down on when it comes it's never looked at like that at all and when yeah, the support yeah. coming in it, it, it is in all bounds so now yeah. i figure that you are growing as a musician and uh, i still want to I, i know this part of it but i'll still ask you this maybe it's true to what you're thinking as well is it like you know do you have this dream where you have a full circle happen for your dad and you where you become this artist who's traveling across and your dad gets to play for you or you still feel embarrassed i think i would still feel okay i can't play in front of my dad mujh se gaya bhi nahi jata it's a very big thing when he's watching in the performance like till date i feel like the best performances i've given is when my dad's not around or at least i don't know what my dad's are now <laughs> because there's this constant um, even if i try to you know fight it or whatever this this validation ka thing i want his validation i want to be good enough for him i right. want him to say that you're great and he very rarely praises me very rarely like it's like it's from outside that i get praise everyone say like, you're so supportive so amazing you have a musician dad wo to like chada ke rakhte honge tujhe i'm like no bro you have no idea i would make the best track spend 10 hours sitting in front of logic like literally killing it and everything and he'll be like what beat is this what song is this yahan se shuru hota hai this is what you know and i'm just like okay i'm nothing in like 10 seconds so this is even a generational I, banter i think exactly even when i reach the vision that i have i think mera bas rule with him is that backstage passes available hain you go and sit in the green room you chill and hear me from there you are nowhere to be seen around me <laughs> nowhere like i don't mind obviously playing on stage with him jab kal ko if i you know whenever reach his level and everything i would obviously love that i would love if he plays with me but yeah abhi ke liye nahi thank you <laughs> what's what's your ultimate dreams aisha like as an artist what do you want to achieve so i actually i don't know if you can see like my vision board there oh <laughs> that's literally my vision board and i don't know if you can see there's like a painting small painting kept in the middle of it right um Is yeah that so that's like a cello or something what is that some coachella painting or something no 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 do you want me to get it <laughs> oh, oh you can show it to us if you can okay a uh, bit <laughs> this is like the dream i've literally drawn oh wow if you can obviously understand this is like a sea of people this is the yeah, stage yeah. and yeah that's like my ultimate dream to play shows all over the globe So yeah, that's like my vision. So do you, have you ever thought of ghost writing as well? Since you have been writing and penning down by yourself, but you already do so. Uh, I don't yet, but I have been open to it, and there have been some projects that we're like working on abhi, where people have asked me to write for them. But most of the time, what happens is because I'm a singer songwriter, that uh, I am approached to sing with them as I... well, like co- collaboration. Mein. So most of the time, it is like a singer songwriter only. I've not yet written for someone who will sing my songs. Jabki, I'm not against it. I feel like. if they can obviously do the song well then i have no problem like i'm a musician first then everything else would come singing and also and there's a little bit of a what do you say a, a celebration when you have somebody else sing your song exactly yeah because they believe in it too and you know they can do it justice properly so i have no uh, problems when it comes to that when you look at uh, you know performing most times usually what happens is a venue like if it's like say zaisha is the act of the day Usually what happens you expect a lot of covers to happen the more popular numbers to be played out is that the yeah. case with you or you will love to play your originals um so at gigs obviously they expect you to play a lot of covers and i do that because you need to like you probably have someone promoting you or um, you know somebody who's given you that gig and right. there are all these uh, things logistics that you need to do but i very slyly just drop in a cover like an original through the cover so yeah. i will have these mixes where i'm probably singing zara zara and then i'll bring dreams and then i'm singing parishan from like shalmali and then ekdam self bring one of my song so i do a little little bit of like just a taste and then when they are like okay what was that song what was like can you show us that song once more and then i play it but when there's like places like tilt and places that they host you properly as an independent artist i think you're given full freedom and there i mostly do my originals i mm-hmm. have about 
11 of them out there somewhere <laughs> so yeah i do all of them and i do uh, thode covers just to you know get the rhythm going and get people engaging and both up but yeah i focus mostly on my own version i think it depends right. on the gig right what what is it like the social media game this is what i ask a lot of artists um <laughs> is that a burn or is that a boon for you when i say um, boon, and boon what i mean to say does it help you and also is it too much of a burnout both i would <laughs> i don't think there is one artist who will be like are it's amazing i love it and also one artist would be like it just burns me out i think there's a mix of both when it, when you know how to handle it and play it well um i have recently started uh, collaborating and putting covers out there when it comes to social media reels and everything i used to be anti all this like in 2020 back when i started i'm like i will be the jhanda of independent artists and i will <laughs> walk with that white flag and be like i don't believe in social media and views are fake and everyone sucks and stuff like that i have been humbled <laughs> in these 4 years to realize that it can be used for something greater than just uh following trends or something like that so i'm still trying to find my footing but i think it has helped me out with gigs a lot it has helped mm-hmm. me out with uh, presenting my own style and also with covers that i'm doing collaborations networking all that up pluses in fact but i don't um i don't do social media with that pressure anymore like i, I used to take a lot of pressure that okay a reel needs to come out and what ends up happening is that you don't do it well enough you don't feel good enough with it and it's just pointless then because right. anyways it's not getting any views so now i started having fun with it i'm like anybody sees doesn't see fuck it i will just doesn't enjoy matter. i will experiment exactly i will just do it for me so right now also my goal is like three reels per a week i try but i don't put that with pressure i'm like okay let's ideate let's get into like a collaboration and if some day i'm not feeling like it i just step back from it i'm like it's okay we're not pushing this this is not our main job anyway so it's uh-huh. fine like music oh. should be not this so yeah <laughs> because uh, the reason i asked you this is because uh, the answers of course different with every artist and most of the time it's inclining towards it, it is a burnout now yeah. very rarely do you tend to have you know some solace in doing the kind of kind of grind that social media asks you to do you yeah. have a manager as well to take care of you for all of this all me <laughs> no no and independent it's artist yes exactly you wouldn't be an independent artist then but, no, but yeah, there, no, but there uh, are artists who are, who have managers and stuff who take care of them and stuff good for them. good for you <laughs> <laughs> well you I got tried. a great support In system that any manager could do right i'm being I very think. honest about it uh there's nothing like having a family back you uh and know the skill and the trade as well really well so that yeah. is a huge uh thing as well. what what what's it like in i mean you've given us uh, your music what's in the future as well what's coming through next i think i'll just keep working keep my head down keep working keep releasing songs and i've been focusing a lot on new material that i've written i've also started focusing now on collaborations i used to be very like protective on my songs and be like this is just me and i'm not going to let a lot of people into the process but i've realized the beauty of working with other people so i think it has opened me up a lot since 2020 uh, it has i think continuously trying to do that and now i've realized that it's important to get in you right. know people to work with you and collaborate with that's how you make the community grow and i think that the strength in every project that has probably gone through a series of people not a lot but at least a series of people that you know have beautified it in some way or the other so now i'm focusing on my next single and there is also talks with uh, a company going on there is talks with collaborations happening so there are like multiple projects i'm into and i just want to expand and keep working in different types of projects so that's like my um vision as of now that i'm following when who is your inspiration for music and stuff apart from the dad dad yeah <laughs> just, you know apart from that um so i have different inspirations for different things i think for vocals in india i love shalmali kolgari i just love her texture i love the way she presents it there is obviously the giants that we talk about sunidhi chauhan and uh, shreya goshal and all these people i've listened to them even in the studio sessions because dad used to you know take me there and they would be singing so i've seen mm-hmm. that process also so i love all these people for sure but i think i have different like 
idols for different things. So, uh, for example, for performing, I just love Beyonce, and I think Michael Jackson's the best performer in the world. Those are literally the giants. And I also follow a lot of indie artists for the kind of sound that they're doing. I don't know if you know Pratiksha Shivastav. She uh-huh. is. Um, yeah, she's an amazing singer. I love her. I met her and we're even connected on Instagram. And she's always so helpful. And every time she would like, you know, give me advice for my career or like, let's jam, let's talk. So very helpful in that way. Um, so yeah, performing, there are different people. Singing, there are different people. I think I have a lot of inspiration. It's good to have like, you know, different exactly. role models because that kind of... Yeah molds you into a better artist better person i mean whatever right. sphere of life that you're in and right. i see a lot of uh growth that has happened and i'm sure it's going to be a lot more as well over time to come with the kind of backing that you have and the kind of support system with the friends everybody coming into aid uh that's what makes it so beautiful and yeah. also another artist helping you to get connected with us i mean what can you ask exactly. for it makes things a lot more sweeter to touch yeah. on it and we can't wait to see every artist who's joined us to hit the numbers that they would love to hit or, you know, just go on to perform and not perform covers anymore, just perform their, their songs. Their own music. No, yeah. our, our purpose is also, and it's, it's a little too far-fetched dream, but we want to see karaoke happen where all the indie artist music is sung by other people. Like, you know, that, that's the kind of things that we look forward to because that's the goal. familiarity to build on a song is what will drive uh, this this industry. And that's something yeah. we look at doing. So hopefully that happens. And uh, all the best for everything that's lined up for you ahead as well. And keep getting inspired by a lot more. Keep inspiring the younger ones who are going to be following uh, Zaisha's music too. Thank you. And it was a pleasure talking to you. This was a short chat. Of course, when the song, a new song comes in, there'll be a lot more to discuss about. And a lot more to understand the growth of Zaisha from where she was now to where she is. Okay. Then we'll start doing these then and now segments. For India. Exactly. That's even more fun. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure once again. All the best, Aisha. We'll connect. Yeah, we stay connected. For sure. Thanks for having me.